Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI. And so I am recording this on Thursday, July 4th. The market is closed for US Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. And SoFi closed on Wednesday, July 3rd at $6.52, being up about 1% on the day. And so I wanted to do a follow-up up on the video that I did just a few days ago on SoFi because in that video I presented uh, you know a downside argument for why I could see price coming down to about six dollars or maybe 550 in the coming weeks uh, but I had a really nice discussion with somebody in the comments and I wanted to present the upside argument for the possibility of SoFi breaking out and going higher Right now, you know, looking at the chart, the big thing for me is that I see the two gaps to the downside. I would like to see those filled. And also, you know, I personally don't have a position in SoFi. And if I were to establish one, I would like it to be at the bottom, but I might be left behind. I do think it is good for us to recognize that, you know, it's good to not be stubborn, not to stick to our levels to the penny because oftentimes we are wrong and in that scenario we get left behind and so you know i think sofi is a really interesting company a really interesting stock and a really nice community behind it i do always enjoy the comments with you guys uh, but one thing that i try to remind myself is that you know i really just ask myself am i in the stock holding business do i want to be in the stock holding business or do I want to be in the money-making business? And so for me personally, I want to be in the money-making business. And so with that being said, I would like to get shares of SoFi at $6 a share, but maybe my thesis is wrong. Maybe those gaps don't get filled. And I think that there are some things in the chart that do present you know, a bullish argument for the upside scenario. And so I wanted to go over that and really just thinking about you know, if I had to be a SoFi shareholder, you know, I think it's a decent time to buy. I think it could be breaking out, but I also think that it could be going to six or 550. And so it's good to kind of average into positions, maybe add a quarter or half of a position here, whether, you know, let's say, a whole position is 100 shares or maybe 1,000 shares, you know, however you want to think about it. Let's say 25% of that could be purchased at 650. Another quarter could be purchased at six. And then, you know, the remaining half could be at 550 if we do get down to this gap. But let's say that doesn't happen and we go over the bullish scenario that this is the low that we saw a bounce here at 620. That was the $6 price. And so what I see here is a falling wedge with this downtrending channel. We have tested the top of it a number of times, got a fake out break here on the 12th, did just test the top of it on July 1st, and we have seen uh, the bottom being respected here. This is a trend line that I had in the last video. I don't believe I went over it though, uh, and that is based on the low from March 19th and the low from April 30th. We did break below that. That could be a great, great dip buying opportunity at 620, the low that we saw on the 21st. And then on the second, we saw a low of $6.29, beautifully testing that downtrending level. It does look like we are in a falling wedge. And so for me, you know, I kind of view it as 50-50. It could be going to six, could be going to 550, but it could also be breaking out of this wedge. So in all fairness, I just wanted to present the case that I could be wrong. Those gaps could not be filled. And, you know, we could be getting up to $7 a share, maybe $8.50 that I have marked here, filling this gap to the upside if we break out from this downtrending level, which does look like it is the top of a falling wedge. So, you know, maybe it's a good time to prepare for the uncertainty of the likelihood of this going down to $6 or the likelihood of this breaking out and going up to seven and higher. So I think it's kind of a good time to have a portion of a position 
and be prepared for it to go lower to $6, but also be prepared for that thesis to not be carried out and this to go higher. And so I had mentioned in a comment that I would do a follow-up on Friday or Saturday if we got a close above 660 on Friday. And so that is really based on the open price uh, that was hit on July 1st, right around here. But really what would be nice is to see a close above the high from that day, which was 667. And so if we got one close at 660, that could be a break of this downtrending level, a close above whatever the high on that day would be on Friday. Uh, whether that's above 667 or if it's lower than 667, we would want to see a close above that level following a break of this downtrend that would serve as confirmation of the breakout and that we would likely be seeing a continuation to the upside. But what we do not want to see is one close outside of that downtrend like we saw on the 12th and then a rejection, a pullback into it, that would not be very good. So, you know, we haven't broken out yet, so there is no reason to be either bearish or bullish with the chart right now because we are in a pattern that could be breaking to the downside, but it also could be breaking to the upside. And so I just wanted to present that scenario and that would really entail a close above 660 followed by a close above 667 or 669 just to have fun with it. Let's get a close. Hey, how about at 690? And if we do look over here at the close of the 13th was at a price of $6.80. That would be a gap fill. We need to see that, so maybe we see that in the days to come. Uh, but, you know, my position is, you know, actually kind of revised. I would like to see it come down to $6 a share, but maybe I'm wrong. And, you know, maybe I'd like to pick up some shares now just in case I'm wrong. Haven't done it yet, but I am thinking about it. Get paid on Friday, so I might be doing that next week. Uh, but maybe that's too late. Maybe we've seen the breakout. But, you know, it's good to not get ahead of ourselves and assume that there is going to be a breakout or a breakdown. We have not seen confirmation of it in either direction. We are still in this wedge, which could be breaking down it could be breaking out. So do look for that, either to the upside or the downside. Either way, great, great opportunities with SoFi. Happy to be making videos. And I would not be doing it on a holiday if I did not care uh, you know, to share my thoughts. But those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and coverage of SoFi. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, you guys.